Hi, Liz. Hey, how are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm still feeling a little bit weirded out from the debate last night, to be honest with you. Was, how are you feeling? I'm, what did you I'm feeling okay. Let me let me quickly introduce this. I'm Robert Wright of Blogging Heads TV. This would be the right show. You're Liz Mayer, a political consultant who, during the last election, was what? Online, di director of online communications for the Republican National Committee, something like that? Yeah, yeah. During 2008, I was the RNC's mm -hmm. online communications director. So, so, yeah. you, so you found the vice presidential debate bizarre. It was really strange. Yeah. I mean, I think in many respects, it was a good debate. I think that the range of topics that were covered um, and the answers that were given on the whole provided a great deal more detail than what certainly what we saw in the first presidential debate and frankly, what I think we may see in the others, too. I mean, I think the good thing about this was that Joe Biden and Paul Ryan, I think, um, some people may sort of laugh at me saying this about Joe Biden, given some of his performance last night. But I think they're both pretty substantive people who have really paid attention mm -hmm. to policy details over the years. Um, I think they're both pretty smart guys, although uh, Biden does obviously have some gaffe issues that he encounters from time to time. And so I think in that respect, it was a really good debate. Um, but man, Biden's behavior in it was pretty strange. Um, and I guess we'll have to see how effective it may or may not be. Yeah, well, this is the big question, whether going around, whether he was uh, too aggressive and dismissive. Uh, you know, a lot of progressives who watched it uh, thought not. Now, you're an interesting uh, observer because although you're a Republican, last week you said you're actually a big Joe Biden fan. I am a big Joe Biden fan, and I'm not the only one also. I think in a post that Eric Erickson has up at Red State today, uh, I think it's today, maybe he wrote it yesterday, um, he actually has a, a note in there about the fact that he does kind of like Joe Biden. I think that there are a lot of people that kind of like Joe Biden mm -hmm. because he seems like a normal, relatable guy. He kind of comes off as like the fun, sort of jokey, kind of crazy uncle that comes over at Thanksgiving. And I think many of us have somebody like that in our family and find that relatable and sort of adorable. But, um, yeah, it, it, at certain points last night, I felt like it worked. There was a certain point, though, at which it became too much. And I guess my thought as a consultant watching this was the laughing was weird, but it worked. You thought when you it thought. Turned into when it turned into getting more into angry with the laughing and with a lot of the interrupting, mm -hmm. that I thought was a problem because it didn't come off as lovable Uncle Joe, who was just sort of like, man, this guy, you know, it came off as he was actually being a jerk. And I don't think that does Biden any favors, mm -hmm. um, although, you know, we may find that the fact that he was talking over Ryan a lot and preventing him from making points, if there was substantive stuff that Ryan was getting out there that you would find that undecided voters liked, then maybe it will have been effective because they probably won't have heard that. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, from my point of view, it was kind of frustrating because I thought, by and large, Obama, I mean, uh, uh, Biden was doing a good job. My feeling was yeah. if he had reduced the number of big dismissive smiles by 40 percent and the number of interruptions by 40 percent, it would have been a great performance because uh, the base would have loved it as much as they loved it. And he would not have alienated as many people in, in the middle. And I assume he did. It was a little it was a little odd. The big the big dismissive smiles were odd. Um, and he got. I just thought a little too aggressive in, in his interventions. I mean, one time, like when Ryan was talking about his religion, I mean, you don't interrupt people when they're talking yeah, about their that, religion. I was going to say that was that was definitely one point where I thought, OK, now we've gone over the tipping point. We've kind of crossed a line and that's not lovable. Right. Right. I mean, Biden can get away with a lot because of his personal demeanor and people like him. But when you are doing things that look like you're mocking somebody's religious faith, I think that's something that generally oh. audiences well, don't Well, you know, if you listen to what he said, he wasn't mocking it. He's a fellow Catholic. And what he tried to interject was, uh, and it was just it was gratuitous and too tangential, but he tried to interject that, you know, that, that conservative policies do not adhere to kind of the social gospel. In other words, the social pre preachings of Jesus. Perfectly fair point. 
to make even in the course of a debate. But mm -hmm. but I just don't think you interrupt somebody when they're when they're giving this heartfelt little talk about their religion. I just don't think that's smart. Yeah. No, I think that's true. And there were a number of conservatives that I noticed online at the time that this was going on commenting that the split screen was showing Biden basically laughing at certain points. And, and I don't think that's a good move. I mean, that I'm not saying he necessarily was mocking, but I think that's how it read to a lot of people. And yeah, if it's just conservatives who are bothered by that, whatever, Joe Biden doesn't care. But I think, to your point, when that starts veering more into the territory of undecideds and independents and moderates, then you have a problem. And that does become something that maybe the base can be okay with, but I don't think anybody else is. But it's interesting. I mean, from what I've seen this morning, it looks like we've got a range of polling out of undecided folks who watched last night. And the CNN poll, it looked like, and this corresponds, I guess, with their focus group that they were covering last night, looks like it was a pretty even mix. Right. Um, I guess there are a couple other polls out that are showing that that's not the case. I think CBS, I want to say it was CBS, is showing that Biden won. Among undecideds, and, uh, yes. Yeah, and then you've got a couple of others of undecideds that are showing that Ryan won. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I wonder if it's something where, you know, CNN's focus group was in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, I don't know if maybe folks there had a more positive response to it than other undecideds, um, but it seems like it was kind of a mixed bag. What, what's funny is, what I wonder is, you know the, uh, I don't know if you watched on, on CNN, the debate itself, but you know the lines showing the response of undecideds to every mm -hmm. moment, you know? Are those yeah. the same people in the focus group? Are those the Virginia people, do you know? Um, it appeared to me that they were, but I haven't actually asked that question to be 100%. Because that, they, whoever that was, struck me as just generally pro-Ryan. I mean, he just, it seemed to me he was much more often above the the, the yeah. uh, baseline than Biden was. I almost got the feeling like they just liked the guy, you know? I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's almost a visual question or something. Uh, it seemed almost so consistent. I, I, I mean, I noticed, one thing I've always noticed in these is, People don't seem to score with these voters, you know, when you're watching the monitoring. Candidates don't seem to score by criticizing the other side nearly so much as they do by uplifting rhetoric or tough rhetoric or what I'm going to do. That that was true for both. But I thought there was generally a pro, um, a pro Ryan skew there. Yeah, I, when I was watching, and admittedly it's difficult to actually watch the two guys debating while watching the lines and pay attention to both. But when I was when I was looking at the lines. I felt like, relative to what I recall from the presidential debate, I felt like both of them were staying sort of above that halfway point a lot. Um, one of the things that I thought interesting is that when Biden was going on the attack about Medicare and premium support, mm -hmm. actually that didn't seem to be doing much. So I don't know if that's to your point about when you go on the attack, undecided to respond as well to that. Or, you know, there has been some polling that Republican groups have come out with that have shown that the Medicare attacks aren't really having the effect that I think Democrats wanted, possibly because of the way that Romney and Ryan have talked about $716 billion in cuts to Medicare under Obamacare. Or maybe because this has been something that came up in, uh, you know, in some of these special elections, it's been saturated in certain places. And I don't know, but I, I was a little bit surprised by that because I felt like that was the kind of thing that I expected to see have more traction, and it really didn't. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of other things, I felt like both of them were staying much further above that line than what I would honestly have expected. Yeah. So do you have a, a bottom line in terms of thinking that one person, in effect, won or, or, or did more for his, uh, for his cause than the other? Well, I actually think, uh, no, I don't think that either of them won. I guess I would say neither one or both won, depending on how you look at it. I think um, Biden's going to get a lot of criticism for how he handled things. Um, Ryan's probably going to get some, too. Um, but ultimately, kind of my read on it is that they both did more or less what they needed to do. There's a question about whether they could have done it somewhat more effectively, and I think probably the answer on both counts is yes, but they both did a pretty good job. I think Ryan needed to get people to see him in a position where they could plausibly believe that if he and Romney were elected and something happened to Romney, Ryan could run the country. Mm -hmm. And I think, based on what we saw with the, the polls of undecideds after the fact, um, 
seems pretty clear that a lot of people did think that. Um, I, I certainly thought he performed very well. Um, I think what Biden needed to do was be in a position where, you know, people already see him in that role, so that's not so much a concern with him. What he needed to do was be in a position to really whack away at Romney Ryan and raise real questions about why you would want to elect these guys. And while he did it in a really strange manner that frankly reminded me a little bit of like my dad. Um, with, think, all, with all due respect to your dad. Which, which actually I love, right? So you, you, I mean, you, you, You're going to go on record as saying you love your dad? I, I love my dad. I love my dad. Um, and, and I love that sort of zany, like, you know, laughing and, you know, having that as part I'd like of to meet your dad if Joe Biden last night reminded, reminded you of your dad. My, unfortunately, my dad has passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry if you imagine some of Joe Biden's, like, funnier demeanor last night. Um, if you imagine that uh, crossed with, um, I don't know if you know who Billy Connolly is, a uh, Scottish comedian. If you look him up, um, I, th I think you get pretty close to what you'd have, my, have if you were talking politics with my dad. So anyway, I find that kind of lovable for obvious reasons. Other people will find it kind of jarring. But, but I think at the end of the day, what Biden wanted to do was raise some real questions about Romney Ryan. And I think he wanted... Is, is sort of awful as it sounds. I think that it, it was part of his objective to prevent Ryan from looking as presidential as he otherwise could have. Uh, I think that's true. And I think, and I think, you know, the way that it came off at certain points was old guy talking down to young kid, right. which certainly Ryan fans, including myself, were not consistently happy with. But when you think about that as a strategy, I mean, if Ryan's objective is to present himself as presidential, that is a way of undercutting that. Right. So. I think they both performed pretty well. I think that there were there were some substantive things that I took issue with. I think at one point, Biden made the, made some comment about how we got into the economic situation that we're in and talking about two wars and Medicare Part D. And I thought it was kind of interesting because my recollection is that he voted for all of those things, which was perhaps not the uh, best. Yeah, point. although I thought, you know, people were tweeting when, when he said, when he said you put you voted to put two wars on the credit card is what he said. And people right. tweeted, well, didn't Biden vote for those wars? I thought maybe his escape hatch for that could be, I don't know what the tax votes were at that point, but maybe his escape, his escape hatch could be, but no, you guys were supporting, you know, tax cuts that dictated that this be put on the credit card or something like that. There could be, there could be that yeah. kind of escape hatch in, in theory. Yeah, or the issue about how th those costs were figured into the budget or whether they were sort of kept out of accounts effectively. Um, there is possibly an escape hatch there, although... I would have to go and actually check the votes because my recollection is that on a lot of issues, I'm not sure if taxes is one of them, but it wouldn't surprise me if it were, on a lot of issues, Biden really hasn't been nearly as sort of liberal as a lot of folks in the Democratic Party. I mean, that was one of the reasons why when they got to the abortion bit, I thought, oh, God, well, you know, the way that she's asked this question, by and large, I thought that the questions were more favorable to Biden than they were to Ryan. But the last question, the point about abortion, I was a little bit like, you know, Biden could really get himself in trouble quite easily here because this is a guy who had issues with what the Obama administration did on the contraception mandate, clearly mm -hmm. spoke up against all of that. And this is a guy who, well, I don't think by pro-life or standard of pro-life they would ever consider him to be. He is a little bit more towards the conservative end within the Democratic Party. I think he did vote for the partial birth abortion ban and things like that. And so... That, that's a little bit of a sticky wicket in some respects. Although, you know, I was watching that undecided voter graph, and yeah. what he was saying worked with them. And, uh -huh. and, and I think Democrats... He's really good at that. And Democrats yeah. will cherish that moment because the, the, they're, they're disappointed that in the Obama debate, there was no play for the female vote um, mm -hmm. on, yeah. on issues like that. Um, I, I kind of, you know, I kind of think there's a case that, uh, that, that Biden won in the following sense, which is that, okay, apparently, so far as we know, undecided it was about a wash. Um, progressives thought Biden did great. Uh, I think Republicans thought Ryan did well. I mean, or, or, or at least let's say that they, they found Biden so annoying that they're, that they're, they're certainly not going to say that Biden won. Okay. So basically in that sense, you've got to split, but I think but I think what Biden did is energize the base. 
his base. And I, and I don't know whether Ryan did that, because for one thing, now that they are tacking to the center, it's kind of hard to energize your base. But I, but I think that's really a moot point, because I think that the key thing is, with Obama-Biden, it was much more crucial to mobilize the base. So even if they had both energized their bases equally, with, with, with Obama-Biden, that was critical, because, because part of the damage of the Obama debate, and I think an underestimated amount of the damage, was just taking the wind out of the sails of, of Obama supporters because his performance confirmed everything that had driven them nuts about him. He's not yes. a fighter. He won't play the class warfare card and so on. And so I think, uh, I, I think, that, I think Biden made a more crucial contribution uh, to his cause than, than Ryan made to his on balance. I think a lot, one phrase you're seeing a lot is Biden stopped the bleeding. And I think that's true in the sense I described, and also in the sense that this just kind of ends discussion of the first debate, thank God, okay? You know, because this is just so dominates. Now, the one, the one caveat is, you know, people have said that in the, in the Gore debate in 2000, right after the debate, it was like, oh, it's a wash, who knows? But then his sighing, his demeanor, kind of got picked up in the media and amplified in a way that hurt him. And if that happens to Biden, it could be uh, problematic. Although I think, you know, if the grin becomes a meme by itself, like people doing GIF files of, of, of the grin, you know, yeah. on cycling, I'm not sure that just looks so bad. I, I don't think the grin is the problem. I think what what's a little bit of a risk here, though, is as you said, yes. When we look back on on that debate in which Gore was doing all the sign, sign that did become kind of a meme going forward, and it is something that a lot of people focus on. The concern that I'd have here about that kind of thing happening is this debate. I, I don't know if you found this, but it, it appeared from a lot of what I was seeing at the time that people were kind of gradually tuning out more as it went on. And the issue that I think that raises is Biden obviously got a little bit more aggressive, more punchy, more interrupting, came off as more of a jerk at, at particular points later in the debate. If you have a situation where a lot of undecided who are watching this had already switched off, when they turn on the news over the next couple of days, that's what they're going to be seeing. And that's not what they think they saw right now, right? So that I think that could be a concern. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, ultimately, I think this stuff's probably pretty short-lived. I don't think, you know, there are a few people out there like me who will be far more incentivized to vote for the Romney ticket because Paul Ryan is on the ticket. I don't, I don't really care about voting for Mitt Romney. I do care about voting for Paul Ryan. Um, but by and large, you know, people are not going to be voting in any way, shape, or form on the best vice presidential candidates. They never do. And they're certainly not going to be voting on the basis of the vice presidential debate. So I think... You know, when you think about the fact that we have more presidential debates coming up, plus that, this is kind of all going to wash away as an issue pretty quickly, I think. Probably so. Um... Maybe disappointingly, because actually, I like both of the guys who were debating last night a hell of a lot better than I like the guys who are at the top of either ticket. <laughs> Yeah. I kind of wish we could have. I kind of wish we could have two more debates with these two. That would be great. I mean, I thought it was really in that way. A little more riveting. To, I mean, you may be right that people tuned out, but I thought there were kind of toward the middle. The exchange was so intense when they were they were they were actually both. I mean, it was it was fine grained debate like like uh, and it was because Biden was being forceful as, in his interjections. But Ryan was giving, you know, in some cases as good as he got. And, yeah, it, and it was an actual substantive sharp exchange in a few yeah. cases that I just thought was very interesting. It was, it was a case where they both overrode the moderator a little bit, but in a much more interesting, dramatically interesting way than the moderator was overridden in the previous debate. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But I think um, conversely, I think folks like you and I like that, that sort of detail in debates and the fact that there was a lot of back and forth. And I think that there was a lot more substance in this debate than certainly what we saw in the, in the pre first presidential debate. I think, though, for a lot of voters out there, they don't track these issues in nearly as much detail as those of us who are sort of paid to work on them or paid to comment on them do. And so my concern was that I can't remember it's sort of what minute mark, but certainly something between a half and two thirds of the way through. I felt like you hit this point where 
for your average person, you could really risk having information overload. Mm -hmm. And I think where that happens, maybe people didn't switch it off, but I think they may have started being less attentive. And so, you know, that, that's going to be a question for both. And frankly, that may not be that beneficial to Ryan either because he was making a lot of substantive points and he's very good at providing detail and doing that kind of thing where I think in the first debate we kind of saw it when Romney got pressed, he sort of batted things away rather than answering and getting into a lot of detail. And so, you know, in some respects, that's Ryan's core strength. And if people were kind of starting to tune out, they may have missed a little bit of that. Now, am I the only one who thinks, I know I'm not because I've heard it from others on my, on my side uh, anyway, that, that particularly when Ryan looks directly into the camera, mm -hmm. he comes off as this guy who's trying to sell you something. And it, and it just seems a little fake. Have you... Have you ever heard that? that was, I'll tell you, when, I first, when he gave the reply to the State of the Union address a couple of years ago, my daughter, who was, I don't know, early or mid-teens at that point, just walked in the room. She doesn't especially follow politics. She just said, he looks like he's trying to sell you something. And that's exactly my response is like infomercial guy. Have you ever heard this? I haven't heard that, but something that may tie in with this. You know, the closing statement last night, a lot of people liked Ryan's closing statement. I didn't. Um, and I, you know, I hate to knock Ryan because he really is one of my favorite people. But I think after that whole debate where you saw him and Biden really free flowing, going after each other, raising a lot of these detailed points and making what I think were, even if there were some factual issues, I think certainly on Biden's side, I think there were some factual issues. Even there always are in debates, though, right? Even with that being the situation, two guys who were making pretty good arguments and I think doing it in a way that was interesting and accessible to people, at least for like the first third to a half, I found it really kind of jarring to see Ryan doing what was obviously a prepared closing statement. Now, I know it's a closing statement mm -hmm. and it's not still sort of part of the debate format, but... One of the things that I really kind of loathe in politics is when everybody does the like, you know, here's my script and this, the, this is what I've memorized and that kind of thing. And I feel like with this debate last night, we saw such a stark contrast. It wasn't like Romney and Obama where you know that basically both of them are operating from the talking points that they always use. You know, maybe they're going to insert a different one here depending on what the question mm -hmm. is. But fundamentally, you're not really going to hear anything that sounds astoundingly new or different or a different phraseology or like a new point that's, that you, you've just never heard either of them make before. That's not how Biden and Ryan handled this. And so I feel like when we saw Ryan switch and speak directly into the camera, saying something that was obviously rehearsed, I guess I felt like some of the authenticity fell away from that a little bit. Okay. I am. So... So that's maybe kind of a similar vein. Yeah, I, I would argue that a little bit of that is, is what happens with him when he looks into the camera. <laughs> but, but, but I think you're right. I mean, I actually felt that a little last time when, when Obama, uh, you know, at the very end, went into closing remarks mode and just kind of bungled it anyway. He was so devoid of energy. But, uh, but, but it struck me as a little odd that time. But I think you're right because this had been so truly debatey. Um, mm -hmm. It seemed weirder. And and and, uh... and and obviously we have we in this in this debate last night. You know, I think with Obama and Romney, one of the critiques that I think you hear of both is, well, I'm not sure what they really believe or if they really believe in anything. They don't have such. I mean, I know a lot of conservatives obviously think that Obama is like this hardcore leftist, and there are lots of progressives that think that Romney is like secretly this like total right winger. But I think in reality, if we look at both of their records. That they're kind of, I don't think compared to a lot of other people in politics and certainly compared to Biden and Ryan, I don't think that the fundamental reason that they're in politics is because there's a particular philosophy and a particular set of core principles that they subscribe to that they want to advance. I just don't think that's what it's about. And that's maybe a pro or a con. I mean, perhaps it makes them less dogmatic. But I do think with Biden and Ryan, it's really clear when we watched that debate last night, there's stuff these guys believe in. They really believe in it. And so when you see that sort of passion and that sort of free-flowing discussion, and then suddenly it's like, oh, for a better future. I just don't think that really works that well. And I know probably other Ryan fans are going to mock me for being as critical on this, but I guess I just think this is a guy who can do so much better than that. Like, there are some people who really can't handle doing politics in any way that's, like, unscripted and, and is sort of 
you know, straight talk mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But Ryan totally can, so why do it? Right. I guess just I don't really understand that. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway. Well, I guess just finally, uh, what's your? What, do you have a take on where we are in this thing? I mean, in trade still has Obama at about 63%, and it went up like a point after the debate on in trade. Um, you know, uh, Nate Silver, and there's a time lag on Silver because of the way the data feeds into the model, but he's now right. down to the high 60s. Uh, do you, to me, it feels like very close to a toss-up at this point. What, what do I you think? think? It's, it feels definitely much closer to a toss-up right now than it did, I would say, like 10 days ago to me. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if I'd still quite say it's a toss-up. There are so many factors when we're at this particular point in the cycle that are really difficult to wait. And I think, you know, one of them is early voting. Um, I continue to say that I think that's really important because the Obama guys generally have a pretty good operation for banking early votes. Um, and that may enable them to run up the numbers in a lot of these places because some of that will have been underway in advance of the disastrous Obama debate performance, which obviously was followed by polling that showed that he wasn't doing nearly as well relative to Romney. Um, so, you know, that's a factor, um, but we also have another two debates, and we don't know what's going to happen in those. We have not had all of the attack ads air. We don't know what's happening in those. I don't have a really clear read on, in certain swing states, what the Republican turnout operation looks like. I know um, certainly there's been some coverage of relative differences in Colorado, and I think this is one reason why Republicans continue to say that they think that Colorado is competitive and we can win it. I'm skeptical of that because there's such a disparity um, in the number of, of sort of victory offices, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, I always think you have issues with sort of counting and polling Hispanic voters, and while Colorado isn't as Hispanic heavy as some people might think, um, I do think that that's enough of a factor there that it may matter. Um, Obama's always had a very strong organization there. I think he continues to. But we don't, we don't know, um, for example, if we're looking at Wisconsin, my, my initial gut instinct would be that no, Romney Ryan does not win Wisconsin. Um, however, I think that there have been certain things that have occurred on the ground that have made Wisconsin infinitely more winnable than what I would have said it was if you asked me three, four months ago. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of these little factors that I think unless you're literally walking the ground and looking at what volunteers are doing and looking at how many people are sitting in phone banks at night, it's really hard to say. Um, but that does speak to the fact that I think this is a much closer contest at this point than I would have expected it to be if you'd asked me a couple weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, and I think certainly the last week says, if nothing else, this is very fluid and, <laughs> and stuff stuff happens and things change. Yeah, um, I think that's right, yeah. Okay, well, listen, thanks a lot. Um, Thank you. I hope we'll do this again. Yeah, maybe after uh, maybe after the next debate. There will be another debate, I'm told. <laughs> that's true, yes. Okay, take care. Okay, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye.